Hi everybody, Jeff here, and uh, today I have an update for you. We've gotten an update from the NTSB, that's the National Transportation Safety Board here, on the bridge collapse. And they've actually given us a report on what they think, where the area of the collapse started. We have some video and we have some pictures for you as well. Here are some early video that the NTSB shot when they first arrived on the scene of the bridge collapse. So the NTSB showed up. And they made their way under the bridge. I don't know why they didn't bring any lights. It would have been nice if they had brought some of those Milwaukee rocket lights. But here you can see what looks like a separation in the corner there where he was just pointing the flashlight. That's right near that cable. See, that's one of those suspension cables that they attached to try to repair the bridge at some point in the past. And so here they're just labeling the components for investigating later on because they will forget. Now here you can see they're examining um, a lot of the structural members, uh, but now they're going to be looking at, right here, the giant girder and all of the contact points to see what they can see. This looks like one of the braces that may have ripped right off of one of the columns. Now this is what makes me nervous here. Look at this. For a core 10 steel that's supposed to have its own rust proofing on the outside, it's you know building up layers over the years, it seems to have its own flesh-eating disease in the middle there with those holes, likely caused from years of salt spreading and probably brine solution and 80% humidity. The external weathering patina looks okay, but there's areas where it's just falling apart. It's like the rust process just kept going in an out of control chain reaction. And here's a few more photos that the NTSB released showing some of their investigations uh, underneath the bridge here, going around looking, and here's an overview of the entire bridge under a nice sunny day so you can see exactly how everything landed. And here they are doing more work, investigating all the connection points. The NTSB today, they released their preliminary news release. Here's what is interesting here. So they're talking about the architecture of the bridge. We've already covered all of that before. We covered the weight limit right here, you can see. We already covered the weight limit you can see right there 26 tons speed limit blah 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 we did all that okay they're talking about the construction of it i'm actually very surprised they came out this early and said something like this but they said here the initial assessment of bridge components indicates that the collapse initiated at the west end of the structure further examination will be performed as debris from the bridge is removed and unobstructed access becomes available so you know what it almost seems folks like they were looking at the exact same thing that i showed you folks last week and that would be this because this is where the gatehouse is this is the west end this is the squirrel hill side so if they think that it started on this side then it could have either been this column or it could have been this column and you remember on, on our video that we showed the other day i showed you that this was already developing a hole here and that this brace is the one that dr g so remember dr g in 2018 put this picture out right here how this brace here had come separated and that caused a controversy, of course. And then I had also showed you when I zoomed all the way in at the bottom of it that I didn't like, you know, all of this that I saw here. Does that mean that this is the point where it came apart? No, no, we don't know. The fact that this early on they're saying that it started on the Squirrel Hill side here is pretty uh, intense. And it does kind of lead us back to all of this stuff that was done here. If you remember, they did all of the repair work here. And we're still not sure what exactly it was they did because we don't have any recent clear photographs of this area. The other piece of interesting news that they gave us is right here. So it says that the Port Authority bus was traveling eastbound at the time of the collapse, which, all right, we already know that just by where it ended up. And it says the bus was equipped with seven cameras. So I think initially reports had said there was nine cameras, but it looks like there was only seven cameras. So there was a forward-facing camera... And there was a camera on the right side aft, and then there was five interior cameras. And it says video data from these cameras have been recovered. I don't know why they haven't released it. They should have released it already because the public's getting antsy. People are starting to get suspicious, and why are they holding back? And this is the part that makes me even more suspicious is right here. Let me zoom in here and show you this part. It says, assisting the NTSB investigation are the following parties. So they're listing these four parties right here. I kind of find that odd that they're assisting in the investigation because these are parties that could be potentially held culpable or responsible for this in lawsuits. And, you know, certainly in, um, you, you've seen our videos covering the Champaign Towers collapse in Miami. Um, the city of Surfside wasn't even allowed near the site. The Dade County Police came in. The Miami-Dade blocked it all off. It was under court order. Nobody goes in. Nobody goes out. 
and any potentially uh, culpable parties were kept out of the site. So this is very strange to me why they would allow this. And at the very least, they should allow some people from the public in there who also have an interest in this to sort of watch over. So you know how like at the election, so sometimes at the election polling sites, they have concerned citizens that just sit there and watch to make sure nobody's doing anything wrong. So they're evaluating the design of the bridge and the condition and everything else. So that was sort of the extent of what they announced today. So again, looking at one of the photographs that the NTSB provided here, if you look at the, here's the two lanes and then the other two lanes on the bridge. This is the sidewalk on the left. This is the other sidewalk right here. And here's your girder. Now, one thing that I'm looking at here, and keep in mind, this is on the east end of the bridge. As we look down the embankment there for the ravine, here's one of the concrete bases there. And again, you can see another one of those flat square things here broken off like I showed you before. If you remember on uh, the video last week, I showed you this, and I showed you Jane Dudley's photograph here. And this is the Squirrel Hill side, see? There's the concrete base, and there's where I figured that the column was was pulled straight off and we don't know if it was resting with a bearing or if it was somehow welded or tied down and you know we just don't have enough like super super close-up photos to be able to tell what was going on right here i would like to see a picture looking straight down on this thing you can see how that concrete base was intact after the bridge collapse but then coming back here on the opposite side of the bridge on the east side, you can see this base here. Now, I don't know if something happened here. It looks like it's really tilting at an angle, and I don't think they were tilting at an angle like that before. I could be wrong. It just could be the way the camera is looking down the hill. We don't know. We do know that these arise out of their footer. You know, it's all covered with dirt. You don't see the underground footer, but it, it did rise out of the footer at a 45-degree angle, um, you know, normal to the hill so that when the columns come down and stand on them, they're at an angle themselves. See, you can see it right here, sort of in this picture, how the, the columns come down at an angle to meet the hill. And here's a shot that was taken supposedly a few weeks before the collapse in the snow. And look over here on the right. See, here's your concrete pad. See how they, they're they sort of sticking out of the hill right there, forming a 45-degree angle, approximately, whatever that angle is. Now, most of these pictures that the NTSB has provided, um, it tends to show them focusing in the same couple of areas. So who knows what they're up to? There's not enough light in here really to see what it is they're looking at. I can't see what they're seeing, but they're examining all sorts of things in here. And here you can see they're just basically photographing everything. And for the most part, under the structure here, you know, all of these beams here and the stringers, the patina looks normal on here. This is the way weathering steel is supposed to look. But except right in here, it looks like it's starting to get a little rougher than normal. This is more the patina that you're supposed to see. And then right up here, too, you see these areas here and right along in here. You really don't want it to get any further than this, but sometimes that that corrosion there, that oxidation process, whatever is going on, it just gets further and further out of control, probably from that road salt and the brine solutions that we've discussed previously. And here they are examining more of the beams and everything. And one thing that I, I, I kind of wonder about when I look at this section here and I see how the rebar got exposed in some of these areas, it looks to me like the rebar was not placed deep enough into the concrete. So those of you guys out there who are designers and builders of bridges who do this every day, if you want to comment below, let us know what you think about this because this to me looks like when they built the slabs that they just set the rebar down and then poured the concrete and that's a no-no. The concrete is supposed to be set in like in buildings and slabs they typically do what an inch to three inches into the slab and i've seen a lot of times when people are doing construction and the city comes to inspect uh, they especially with pool builders they always make the same dumb mistake where they put the rebar directly on the ground and expect to pour the concrete right on it which is not what you're supposed to do the rebar has to be elevated up into the concrete a little bit otherwise th that's you're not going to give it any strength when it's sitting right on the hairy edge like you see this here just waiting to pop out so it looks to me like the concrete was almost like a like a facade on there like a like a thin skim coat and that's all it was the rebar is not going to protect the concrete now, I'm not saying this had really anything to do with the collapse. This is the payload. These guys here are the support structure for it, okay? All of those cross beams there and then the stringers 
are what's holding this payload. But I'm just looking at that going, that just doesn't look right to me. So, what is your opinion, folks? What do you think happened? Let us know down in the comments below. And let us know, when do you think the bus videotapes are going to get released to the public? Because we have the right to know that. There's, there's no criminal investigation. There's, there's no uh, evidence thing they have to worry about that they need to sit on. They can certainly release that, just like the cops release body cam videos all the time. Like the guy that the cops shot, supposedly, uh, innocently, an innocent guy in his living room. And they have already released a video on that. So why can't these guys release a stupid bus video already? I mean, come on. Well, thank you so much for joining us, folks. We hope you found this very informational. And make sure you subscribe with the alerts turned on so you can be alerted when the next time we upload future updates to this and other disasters. Well, thank you so much and have a great day, folks.